If orange is your favorite color, you're gonna love the new peak meter PM18C in the spotlight today. This is a True RMS 6000 count multimeter and wow, I gotta say, it just looks so darn nice. It has that kind of, oh, Keysight slash Agilent uh, orange to it, which I really like. It's uh, a little on the subdued side, but no, it really looks good. All right, so it ships in this pretty decent looking box, nice and colorful, definitely got some zing to it. And hey, I know what you're asking, what do you get in the box? Good question. Well, here's your answer. A whole lot of stuff. Starting off with the user manual. Now, they actually give two user manuals. One is in Chinese and the other is in English. They're the exact same manual, um, but yeah. Put the Chinese one aside and let's take a quick gander, shall we? Nice looking, good size font, nice typeset. Definitely something usable. What else do we get in there? Of course, we get our peak meter test leads and let's see oh yeah they're a pretty good size definitely on the bigger size um, that I like I like it a lot 20 amps max mm, take that with a grain of salt I already finally got that shroud off and yeah that's really sharp very pointy um, you don't want to stick that too close to your eyes um, okay we're gonna see how good they are first impressions not too shabby anything else yes one more thing of course we get our temperature probe because the peak meter does do temperature Ura! let's check it out got a messy what a messy person i am today i beg your pardon i never promised you an orange multimeter garden okay i will stop no singing on this channel dang it already so the meter itself as you can see is a non auto ranging manual meter and yeah I've been doing a lot of manual meters lately not sure why it's not like I'm doing this consciously there's just a lot of good looking manual meters coming on the market Ura. gotta say this is a bit of a beast it is heavy as heck yeah it is not light you don't want to stick this in your back pocket um, yeah uh, really heavy and it takes four uh, 1.5 double a cell so that's probably got a lot to do with the weight um yeah nice holster again good quality um if you drop this i really don't have any worries about uh, it not being operational it's definitely well protected in that take a look at that tilt stand that is a tilt stand folks yeah none of this limpy skimpy looking stuff no nice and wide solid um, comes out without taking off a finger Deployment is super easy, and once it's up, it is up for the count. Oh, all right, so much for that idea. But generally speaking, wow, loving it. That is one heck of a tilt stand. Rotary selector switch starts off at the 12 o'clock off position. Live mode. Volts DC from 600 millivolts to 1000 volts. Volts AC to 750 volts. AC high current up to 20 amps. DC current up to 20 amps. HFE or transistor mode. Frequency up to 10 megahertz. Capacitance up to 100,000 microfarad. Continuity and diode, defaulting to continuity. Resistance up to 60 mega ohm. Finally, NCV or non-contact voltage. At the top of the meter on the left, we have our select switch. And on the right, we have our hold. This is just a standard one touch hold, as well as a backlight. In the middle, we have our HFE or gain. This is where you put your transistor, NPN or PNP. At the bottom, we have four separate inputs, starting with the common on the right. On top of that, we have our capacitance, diode, continuity, temperature, live wire, voltage, resistance, frequency, and duty cycle. Bottom left, we have separate input for microamps and milliamps. And finally, at the top, high current, up to 20 amps so it's a good looking meter um, as I mentioned before it has a really nice sleek svelte look I like it it looks like it means business turn it on for the first time shall we bada boom bada bing bada bang greeted with our standard liquid crystal display technology and it's here in a live mode right now I will switch it to volts DC and you can see, wow, we got some pretty big numbers going on here. 
nice big font. Yeah, I am liking it. Now let's check out that backlight. And we hold it down for a couple of seconds and voila, the backlight will stay on for only 15 to 20 seconds. Why oh why can't these manufacturers make it stay on indefinitely? I don't know why it's such a big deal. I really don't. Ah, lights out in Georgia. So yeah, 15, 20 seconds is all you got. Really nice looking display though. And as you can see, it doesn't matter what the angle is. It is quite verbose, quite clear. Not hard on the eyes at all. Also ships with a standard auto power off. 15 minutes, you're gonna get one beep. After that, you've got 60 seconds to either wake up or the meter shall turn itself off. Oh, yeah. Oh. Starting things off with our DC accuracy test. Here we go. Looking at 2.5 volts and we are getting Oh yeah, spot on 2.5. Next, we wanna see five volts. Oh gosh, nice, 5.001. Next, we wanna see 7.5 volts. Spot on 7.50. Finally, we're gonna look at 10 volts even, we hope, survey says. Spot on, wow. So in the accuracy department, peak meter PM18C is a winner. Resistance is next, I got a 22 mega ohm resistor in front of me. And wow, nice and fast. Five ohm resistor. 0 0.8, 0 0.7. Pretty close, let me just see if we have any resistance on these leads. Yeah, we do about 0.2. So factor that into the equation and it is pretty well spot on. All right, we're sitting at six mega ohm right now. Let's see how fast it is to range. Five mega ohm, four, three. Yeah, nice and fast. No worries here. Looking at household mains now, 120 volts AC, looking good. Unfortunately, if we wanna look at that uh, frequency or duty cycle, we are going to have to unplug it and switch that rotary to the selector switch all the way to the frequency setting. Ah, why couldn't it just be a push button away? Really, really cumbersome. All right, so we're showing 60 hertz. Yeah, I moved that selector switch all the way. Had to unplug the leads first. What a pain. Hit that selector switch again, and there is our 50% duty cycle. Looking good. Just awkward. Too many steps. Capacitance is next, 100 millifarad is what they've got marked on that hot little dial. Let's see it, let's go for the gusto. Three, two, one, 100 millifarad, fingers crossed. I don't think it's gonna be a problem, haven't tried it yet. Your guess is as good as mine. We're getting that visual indicator and oh my God, we have an OL. Sometimes there's a little hookup going on. Hmm, does not like this 100 millifarad cap. Now this cap does have a tendency to go a little bit over that 100 millifarad range, but usually not. Oh, that's too bad. Boo hoo hoo. Didn't pass the 100 millifarad taste. I'm upset. All right, well, we're gonna try a 47 millifarad. Here we go. It is thinking. I know you're not gonna let us down, Pete Peter. No way, there you go, 43.64 millifarad. That is pretty well spot on for this cap. I'm assuming that 100 millifarad, um, ah, darn, it's too bad I don't have anything a little bit less than 100, but I don't. But uh, yeah, that just kind of irks me a little bit. Anyway, we're in dial mode now. Gotta say this meter is really quick to respond. As I said before, this defaults to continuity, but uh, hit that selector and bada boom, bada bing, no delay. You are in diode mode. Okay, here we go, starting off with the green LED. It is lit and there is our forward voltage drop. Over to the yellow, same thing. Down to the red, looking good. Whoa, over to the blue. Yeah, and we have a forward voltage drop indication. Finally, the white. Are we gonna be five for five? Yes, we are. 
excellent sorry as you can see yeah not a worry so five for five visual indication as well as lighting them all up i'm a happy camper thank you mr peak meter good job And how can I forget the shot key diode? Now this does not have an audible beep, unlike some of the uh, newer cheapos, such as the Habotest, uh, the newer revision of the Kaiweets H2118A, they do have a nice audible beep in diode mode. Let you know that diode is good, but as you can see, we have that forward voltage drop, but no beep. Beeps are good, beeps are good. Ah. Speaking of beeps, it's gonna be a lot of beep going on. It's continuity time in the cheap O nation. Here we go. Stock probes, three, two, one. Latched and loud, it just, you know, a, a, a fraction of a delay there. And what I don't like is the uh, peak meter does have these nice LEDs at the top and they will come alive in continuity mode, but you gotta really hold down for a while. Too bad it wasn't quicker. Ah, let's try the Probe Masters. Probe Masters, here we go. Bada boom, bada bing. It's definitely faster. There is still that, like, just like a millisecond of a delay, but long enough if you're a, a continu continuity aficionado like some of us, it's just not up to par. It's still really good. Don't get me wrong on that one. Better than a lot of them, but yeah. And the Probe Masters really don't make much of a difference. And too bad about that light. Ugh. Okay, I'm out at the soldering station now. Let's see how accurate this temperature probe is. Got the soldering, uh, the paste out right now. And let's see. And that light is just way too short. 600, 610, and it's slipping. Ah. Seems to be fairly close. We're almost there. Next up, it's NCV mode, of course. And here we go. So that seems to work pretty good, actually. Um, yeah, I have to be within a certain proximity before that alarm even goes live. No, I like that. I like that a lot. If I follow the wires. Yeah, so generally speaking, NCV seems to work nice. I'm gonna take a quick look at amps sitting at just over half an amp right now, 0.59 amps according to the power supply, 0.59 spot on on the peak meter. Let's take it up to 1.35 amps and yeah, no worries here. Up, up and away, 2.38 amps looking good. 3.24 amps to the power supply, 3.24 spot on for the peak meter, and maxing it out, 5.01 amp, 5.02 amps for Mr. PM18C. Thought I'd take out a couple of uh, recent meters, the H2118A from Habotest, and the rich meters, RM406B, just so you can get a perspective in terms of the overall dimensions. And yeah, that peak meter, is a tad bit, I'd say about a quarter of an inch, maybe a couple of centimeters longer than the other two. So it's a good sized meter. It's not crazy sized, um, but it's definitely a good sized multimeter. Sitting in frequency mode right now, and unfortunately 1.4 megahertz is about it for this peak meter. According to the manual, we should be capable of 10 megahertz, but look at this, when we try to go above, 1.5 megahertz, that's it. It just goes haywire, AKA bonkers. Bring it back down to 1.84, one, well, basically one and a half megahertz and it's fine. So, so much for that 10 megahertz. Uh, yeah, ain't gonna happen with this peak meter. Too bad. Next up, we're gonna take a look at the live wire feature. Basically it is a one probe detect method put the positive lead into the positive input terminal. Make sure you have your selector switch to the live and you start probing. And if you find anything, it's gonna let you know. And there we go, it is live. And you can tell we have that audible indicator saying, yes, we have some serious voltage going on. Alrighty, teardown time. 
Here we go. Now I cut that boot off rather easily. I thought this would be a little more uh, problematic, but no, it wasn't. Take a look at the back. You can see we've got a couple, count them, one, two, three, four screws and the one Phillips to access that battery housing. Let's open it up. It's too bad they couldn't use something like these uh, 3.7 volt 18650 lithium batteries, you know? Give us a little more space and get rid of some of the bulk. Anybody listening? You guys listening? Peak meter, you listening? Let's see some 18650s in there next time. Something else worth pointing out as well is the fact that you've got that nice threaded brass insert there. So no matter how many times you open up this puppy, you're not going to strip it. All right, let's get down to business and take the rest off. All right, here we go. Time to open up the beast. And yeah. Alrighty, let's take a closer look. Well, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to notice that there is no shielding. Yes, they've dropped the ball once again. Take a look at the input protection. Well, not a whole lot, um, but we do have some nonetheless. On the milliamp side of things, we have a 600 milliamp, 250 volt fast acting fuse. That's a five by 20. And as well, we do have part of that diode clamp is for the milliamp range. On the high current side, a 20 amp, 250 volt ceramic fuse. And once again, uh, some diode clamping going on. Over the voltage side, we've got two PTCs and that's it. That's all. As well, you notice that ocean of blue PCB. You don't see that all the time in multimeters, but they've utilized a blue instead of a green PCB and kind of like it. Main IC is cobbed and over here we have our transducer speaker. And on the left hand side, we've got an oscillator, crystal oscillator. Over at the bottom here, we have our EEP run. That's the T24C02A, which means that is undoubtedly a DreamTech IC. And look at that protruding extrusion. Wow, there you go. So that's why we have some pretty good NCV. Once again, we've got that nice long elongated filament coming out of the housing and it's definitely gonna help uh, detect better than just a built inline PCB style of NCV detection. Good stuff. Another nice feature, it's always the little things that uh, matter most. Um, they've got the uh, battery housing connected via a nice a jumper cable over here instead of just soldering some cables in there randomly so that is a little bit of attention to details well we've got some nice glue here on the flashlight uh, keeping everything solid and in place overall pretty clean pcb um no flux residue what have you looks nice and clean from my perspective okay gonna put it all back together come back with my closing thoughts Hey, this is a pretty darn good looking multimeter and it performs just as nicely. Yeah, the PM18C has a lot going for it. It's faster range and it is overall a really nice meter to work with. True RMS, 6,000 counts and a nice big bold display. What don't I like about it? Well, that backlight really is aggravating and too bad that frequency didn't at least get a little bit better than one and a half megahertz. Also, the continuity left something to be desired. Definitely could have been an improvement. All things said though, at the end of the day for around 30 bucks, 35 bucks or so Canadian, 30 US, you're getting a lot of bang for your proverbial buck. The peak meter PM18C gets a solid 3.5 out of five stars. Hey, I know it's a manual ranging meter, but don't let it sway you. These things can be great to work with and it's a great way to learn about your multimeter at the same time. Thanks for watching this review, everybody. Till the next one, keep on testing.